can you tell me your first and last name? Uh, Tony Branson is my first and last name. And can you tell me about your background? Like, where did you grow up and where have you lived? I grew up in Maryland, um, right outside of Washington, D.C., in Prince George's County, Largo area. Mm -hmm. uh, graduated from Central High School. I uh, went to college um, in a couple different places. I went to a few junior colleges, uh, Frederick Community College, and then I got my four-year degree um, from Robert Morris University. Mm -hmm. uh, I also attended the New York Film Academy here in New York City, which brought me to New York and started me on my uh, journey as a filmmaker and a fashion designer. And so I've been in Brooklyn, New York ever since mm -hmm. 2000. Yeah. 2008. And can you tell me about your professional background? Sure. Uh, I've had like, you know, kind of like a blue collar, you know, work ethic, I would like to say in some sense. Uh, you know, I worked in a restaurant a lot. Uh, I was a bartender, server, manager, proudly. Uh, I really love the, the restaurant industry. I really help, feel like it helped me take my professionalism to another level um, and grow up, you know what I'm saying? You know, I have to come home from college and then, you know, being 30 and then, you know, doing these different ventures in the business. I just feel like it really helped me grow. So I did that. Um, and then I was blessed to be able to finally get into film and television uh, where I've been working over the last five years on set and production. So that's where I'm at. And then on the side, of course, building my business as a fashion designer uh, mm -hmm. and entrepreneur. Uh, how did you learn about where, what kinds of, um, you know, either formal or informal educational opportunities did you engage with in relation to fashion, becoming a fashion designer? and or entrepreneur? None. Uh, None. You know, I just kind of just did it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, outside of just the, the, the classes I took in college, um, mm -hmm. you know, none really. Um, <clears throat> because it was, it was like, am I going to go to film school or am I going to go to FIT or something? And mm -hmm. for me, it was like, I, I, I wasn't in a situation to do both. You know what I'm saying? Um, they both cost a lot of money. I'm not going to go in debt for both of them. So which one can I kind of learn on my own fashion? Mm -hmm. uh, I felt like I needed a little more. I needed more structure in the film. Uh, and, I, and I felt like my, my ideas were so big and, 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 you know, my vision was so big. I, I needed to understand how to hone that in and also be willing to take chances on myself when it came to storytelling and writing and stuff. So, uh, so with the fashion, I felt like, hey, as long as I can just save my money, come up with my ideas, get some T-shirts, I can start to do this thing. And I just mm -hmm. and I just kind of did it like that. Once I trademarked my name, got my logo, did all the legalities, I just kind of just started teaching myself reading books, you mm -hmm. know, watching mm -hmm. documentaries, yeah. interviews. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so that's amazing. <laughs> so <Self -taught. laughs> Yeah, and, and I'm still learning, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is there one um, book or documentary or anything that you felt helped really inform some of your decisions in relation to like starting a business or or they all sort of equally had influence? Yeah, I think they all kind of sort of equally had influence. And I mean, I, I feel like I'm still such a student. I was never a film, a uh, fashion nerd, you know what I'm saying? In the sense of like, I knew all of these um, extravagant designers and, you know, all of the difference between the fabrics and all these different things. I, I you know, I wasn't really caught up in that. I was a sports fanatic, you know what I mean? I was caught up in that, but I knew that I wanted to dress nice and I knew how I wanted things to look and to feel. And I knew I didn't see that yet and I needed to see it. So in order to see it, I needed to create it. So that's how fashion, I kind of fell in love with that because I was so in love with 
knowing that I would go, I was going to create something and do something that nobody else was even cared about. Mm-hmm. You know, by caring about the tomboy and the masculine woman. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, how would you? What can you talk about? Um, your film production and what you love about that? Oh yeah, I mean, storytelling, you know, it is, I mean, it's one of the most beautiful, you know, things in the world. You know, everybody can tell a good story, right? And it can take you somewhere else. And so I'm totally in love with that process. And, you know, it just started for me, of me having so many stories to tell from my life. And I felt that so many people could relate and understand. And it was therapeutic for me to paint these pictures that I knew I could make into moving images. You know what I'm saying? Um, And once I started to write, the ideas just started to flow. And I was like, okay, I can do this. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. because it's always a trick you play with yourself when you think you can't do something. Like I thought I couldn't be a director. No way. I thought it was so hard. You know what I'm saying? There's no way, but it's like, yes, what? You can do that. You know, but it's like we trick ourselves into thinking we can't do these things until we actually do them or start to do them. It's like, okay, I got this, you know? Um, And so that was my process. And like I said, um, I started to write and I started to write um, a TV show about my life. And from there, it just grew. I found a film school, uh, the New York Film Academy, that had this producing program that was one year and was going to teach me all these things. And I was going to come to New York and I was just like, yes, let's do this. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and I never left. And I just kept building and kept working. And here I am. What are some of the major themes in the story of the television show about your life? Uh, my friends you know, uh, family, you know, uh, basketball, uh, relationships, you know, the relationships. I think that, you know, even when you're caught up young as a young lesbian, right, it's all about the friendship. You know, I think that's why so many girls, you know, um, you know, they say go through this phase or whatever like that with their best friend because they feel safe. You know, they they, they can be vulnerable, you know what I'm saying? And it's just, it feels natural. It's not even like you're thinking about anything's wrong because this is a person that you can just give everything to. And that's when you like, kind of like fall in love with somebody. And so you don't even realize it at the time. Um, And so, in this, I really wanted to focus on the relationships because I feel like in so many other, even, you know, uh, TV shows or whatever with young people, it's always about sex. You know what I mean? And of course, you know, sex is involved, but I didn't want it to be so magnified, especially as, you know, uh, being a part of the LGBTQ community where that's always a thing about being sexual deviants and this and that. And and not to say that I intentionally was thinking about that, but I really wanted to, as a young kid for me, it really was about the relationships. I was scared like to like have sex for the first time with a girl. Like, you know what I mean? Like I was not like I avoided it, you know what I mean? I was not just trying to jump right in, you know? So it's like it when you see these things like wow. You know what I mean? Like, I was not trying to do it. I was like, all right, I got to go home, you know, see you tomorrow, school, <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> but, uh, so, yeah. And um, do you, uh, did, do you, you mentioned basketball. Do you play basketball or do you just watch or have you played? No, I played basketball my whole life, really, since I was 10 years old. You mm-hmm. know? I still play from time to time when I can now. Um, but <clears throat> yeah, basketball was always <clears throat> a very vibrant part of my life. Um, and you know, it also taught me a lot, you know what I mean? About just discipline and having willpower and not giving up, and, you know what I mean? Just constantly getting better and, you know, always aiming to start, you know, not, you know what I mean? Like always getting ready for the game. Like, so it was always an integral part of my life. And it also was like a family, a bonding thing for the family. 
We always bonded over sports and basketball, coming to the games, and all that, that type of stuff. So it was very family oriented environment uh, and community with the basketball. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, are there other major influences from growing up that you feel have shaped who you are today? Um, I mean, yeah, I think that everything I went through shaped who I am. My mother, most importantly, you know, mm -hmm. my mom's hard on me, you know, but rightfully so. I think it was great, you know what I'm saying, that she was the way she was because she really prepared me for the world, you know what I mean? And, um, and I, and I think that, you know, because we, you know, did have some, some ups and downs and difficult times that that was able to shape my fortitude, you know, in a lot of ways. And she was a, very much a hard worker. You know, she always got up and went to work, you know, it was always about taking care of the family. And that was such a great example, um, to see that even throughout my entire family, uh, you know, always getting up having that mentality to get better and, you know, work for the promotion, or whatever, you know what I mean, to, to bring more back home. Um, so I think all of those instances really shaped me. And, and even the bad times, you know, when people might have done me wrong, or, you know, mistreated me or misviewed me, which I think always happens a lot. And that's why um, with my clothing line with Stylist Freedom, uh, like the mascot, quote unquote, is the elephant. Um, because I'm always the elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. And I feel like so is the Tom boy, you know, because it's always like, whoa, what's going on over there? You know, you always want to ask a question, always want to look, is that a boy or a girl? Like, what's going on? And so I feel like it's the same jazz with the elephant, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I was going to ask about the. I'll, oh, I'll bring it up later too. But I was, I was, sure. I was, I was wondering about that. <laughs> and then, can you talk about your gender and sexual identities? Um, how would you describe those? And and do you have um, particular pronouns that you'd like me to refer to you with? Uh, yeah, my gender. I'm female. Uh, she, her. Uh, I'm a lesbian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I I very much embrace my masculinity, you know what I'm saying? But I also embrace my femininity and being a woman. Like I'm, you know, like I, I always felt myself saying, yeah, I'm cool with it. Like, like I was just accepting it. But like, no, like I'm perfectly happy being a woman. You know, have there been instances in my life where I've had moments of like, oh man, life might be easier if I was a guy, sure. You know, especially when I was younger and just misunderstood and didn't really understand myself. It felt like, man, I give up, you know, not give up on life, but I give up on trying to make people get me, you know, trying to make people understand, you know, see past, right? See past all of that. So, uh, you know, so I had my moments growing up with that. But as I grew and as I, you know, became and understood, you know, I'm more than happy with who I am. Um, mm -hmm. And I feel like it's very important for me to represent that, especially in this day and time. And this is in no disrespect to anybody who's in the spaces of transgender or non-binary or what have you. But for me, I feel like it's very important to just represent as a masculine woman because I also feel like, um, the younger generation doesn't get to see that as often now either. You know, I feel like in a lot of spaces, the traditional lesbian is kind of like, you know, uh, you know, being washed out in a sense. Um, mm -hmm. And so I want to stay traditional, you know, for, for, for that reason as well. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it feels good to me, you know, to just be myself um, mm -hmm. and not to put these boundaries and layers on top of it. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at. And was there any particular moments that stood out that helped you feel more connected to your authentic self? Uh, 
I think just in any time that I've had difficulty, you know, I never had coward to, uh, you know, the energy of others. I stayed true, even if it meant I had to be by myself, or, you know, people turning back on me, or, you know, me might feeling like I'm being ganged up on, not literally, but figuratively in the sense of just people not, well, you know how girls can be, you know, different things like that. And so, and like I said before, misunderstood. Mm -hmm. um, but all I did was every time, try to improve myself, you know what I mean? Uh, but, you know, even having sex with a guy gave me a lot of clarity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, know, that, you know, that was a big clarity moment because I was in the, in the moment of like, do I want to be with women forever? Like, is this my jam? You know, you're in your 20s, you know, you're trying to, you know, I needed to make sure, you know, that I wasn't going to go back and have these you know, because that's how you just while out, you might end up pregnant or, you know, whatever, just because, you know, you know, you're in a space where, you know, your body might be feeling one thing or, you know, you might be feeling a way because maybe your friends are living a certain life or maybe a friend who was gay is now straight. And, you know what I mean? It's, it's a lot of different layers, you know what I'm saying? As, as young women that we go through and it's cool, you know what I mean? But you also fight against that when you're being a masculine woman too, because you feel like, yo, I shouldn't be feeling like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, why am I feeling this way? You know what I mean? So it's a lot of different layers that are going to it. But so, you know, I had to make sure that I went through my process and I was, you know, those were parts of my process. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how would you describe your personal clothing style? Uh, real chill, laid back. You know what I mean? Simple, but 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 fly at the same time. You know what I mean? Um, I've never been the type to go out my way to go buy pieces or things. You know, I think now, you know, I'm just really starting to get into that. You know, because before for me, I was just trying to stay within the budget, whatever my mom's gave me. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean? <laughs> like just get the best whatever I got with that, and then when I started getting my own money, um, for real, for real, it was about trying to build the business. You know what I mean? It wasn't even about going to buy some Gucci or going to go buy this. So that it was really about trying to start the business and come to film school. Mm -hmm. um, so when I really started, came, when I came home from college, you know, maybe after about a year or so, it was really about all right, what's next? And it was building for that. And so I had to save my money. I got my own apartment. And, you know, it was about paying bills and just trying to stay ahead, right? Um, so I wasn't really, I wasn't really thinking about that. So yeah, so I keep it, I keep it simple, man, but I stay fly though. You know what I mean? Low key, you know what I mean? Um, but I'm gonna turn it up, you know, as I, as I continue to grow, you know, within my own style, you know, myself. And I, you know, so I would say that my style is, is low key but fresh. And um, did you, I can't remember if you mentioned this, but what did you study in your undergrad before film school? Oh, communications. Oh, communications, okay. Maybe you mentioned that, I Communications, media okay. production, I didn't mention it, but I studied uh, communications, media production, so I, I got a bachelor's of arts, you know, in the MBA, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I went to the New York Film Academy after that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then what has your experience been like shopping for clothing or, or styling yourself throughout your life? When I was young, it was tough just because I had so many parameters around me. I couldn't really get what I wanted because, you know, I had to... I, could, I had to dress a certain way, but now, you know, I have free will, you know, I think that there are a lot of more options these days, um, especially where, you know, the clothes are cut, you know, the silhouettes aren't necessarily tailored in such a big baggy way, you know, with big thighs and all that, 
a lot of, you know, guy stuff nowadays is, you know, really, really fit and form fitting. Um, it's not so baggy and oversized uh, for women to wear. So uh, I think it's great, you know, aesthetically. Um, there, there's so many options um, yeah. for women in menswear. Um, and that's really what what's important to me. I really don't pay attention to women's wear. I do, but I don't. You know, I do um, for my ladies, you know what I'm saying? And also to keep in mind certain things that I can't create once I take it to another level. Because when I take it to another level, I will need to create some women's wear. You know, mm -hmm. I will need to immerse myself in that a little more. Um, so, you know, so I won't be ignorant to that fact, but um, I get excited to shop. I think that nowadays it's, it's so many options. It's fun. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then now I'm going to switch to talking about um, your brand, Stylist mm -hmm. Freedom. And when and how did the idea come about for your brand? In college, um, I was taking a media class and we had to come up with the logo, uh, the logo that describes us. And I was racking my brain. I think we had the whole hour, like, I think it was like a three hour, one week class, it's like three hours or something, right? And so I'm racking my brain because we had to come up with something before the end of the class. Um, and I came up with Tomboy, every girl goes through. And so we came up with the name and we had to make a presentation. And so once I sat there and I thought about what it could be, I was like, yo, this can be a clothing line. Mm -hmm. Tomboy, clothing line. Yeah, that's for the tomboys. Yeah, every girl goes through it, right? Because I feel like, you know, that was the thing like, oh, you just a tomboy, you'll go out of it. All girls are tomboys, you'll go out of it. It's fine. You know, you're just going through your tomboy phase, right? So I was like, oh, everybody's a tomboy. So um, I just came up with it in college and I never let it go. You know what I'm saying? I just tried to figure out a way, how can I make it happen? Like I said, once I knew that I really loved the filmmaking, when I came home for college, I'm like, damn, I can't do both of these things. And I couldn't do them in Maryland. And I felt like I needed to leave there to, to do it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so I came up with it in college. And then, can you tell me about the significance of the name and why you chose it and what it what it means? Yeah, style is freedom. Um, you know, I initially thought it should be tomboy, but I couldn't trademark tomboy. And tomboy was also, uh, I felt it was too simple in terms of people thinking that it was going to mean something that it didn't mean, you know, or that it was, you know, When people think of tomboy, they think of girls that look and act a certain way. So I felt like, man, it's, it's, I'm dumbing this down. And so I wanted to be able to create something that started more of a conversation and made a statement. Style is freedom. Because style is freedom. You know, free yourself, live free. You know what I'm saying? The, mm -hmm. just, the, just, the, just the essence of freedom in the sentence is just like, yes. You can go somewhere with that. So I came up with Stylist Freedom, a tomboy lifestyle brand. And I felt like that made more of a statement and was more powerful and could create legacy. You know, I feel like tomboy is just like, but I could just be for the moment. That doesn't, you know, it's anything. But Stylist Freedom really is classy. So I wanted to do something that, that, that could create a legacy and, and start a conversation. And then... When did you officially become a business? In two, you know, I guess in, in 2010. 2010. Oh, cool. Wow. Yeah. And then can you tell me about the business model for your brand and how that works? Well, yeah. Well, I mean, as of right now, I have just my online shop, stylusfreedom.com. Um, I have been actively working on trying to get on Amazon, and, you know, branch out and do those different things. But um, unfortunately, you know, I catch these roadblocks sometimes. Uh, also looking to partner with different companies and brands and 
through partnerships. But, you know, for me um, right now, so I'm, I'm, I'm just focused on myself so we can get bigger. And I feel like as I get the brand bigger, those things will come, right? So right now, again, I got the online shop and I do a lot of uh, in-person festivals, excuse me, in the summer around the city. So I do a lot of uh, markets and uh, I'm at the Brooklyn Museum. I do all the, 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 the pride festivals here in the city uh, throughout Pride Month. Um, so right now I'm just building it independently, um, and, in more of a grassroots way, even though I've been around for so long, um, I, I'm, I'm still working every day just to, just to get more exciting ideas, more, more fresh fashion, um, and get better collections out there so that I'm going to get that one that gets out there and it's going to take it to the next level. And then can you talk about the kinds of products that you have and your price point? Oh yeah, I do t-shirts, I have hats, socks, sweatshirts, jackets, uh, do crop tops. Uh, I, I had uh, dress shirts and, you know, some different type of items because also when I do these markets, I do embroidery. So when I embroider, I get some pieces that I've thrifted and then I create, um, I create one of one pieces. Um, so those pieces vary, like I say, from slacks to jeans, um, to dress shirts, to hoodies, to jackets, to coats. Um, but on my website, you're gonna see traditional streetwear, which are hats, t-shirts, hoodies, uh, shorts, socks, mm -hmm. even have some flip-flops. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so primarily on the e-commerce site, it's the items you mentioned, but then in some of the in-person events, you might have some of these one of a kind, more um, like unique pieces that you've crafted exactly. into like cool items. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. Like this shirt I have on right here. Mm -hmm. So I embroidered a bird. Oh, cool. It. And then up here it says live free. Oh my gosh, so like I love that. Little stuff like that. You know, um, just little one-on-one -on -one pieces that represent freedom. Like I said, freedom it means so many things from the water to the sky to these birds to just a road that never ends. You know, an open bird cage, all these different things are just represent just liberating yourself, liberating your spirit. Um, how, how do you embroider? Do you have your own embroidery machine? I have my own embroidery machine. I bought a commercial machine a few years ago um, and I taught myself how to use it. And so, yeah, so I'm bored here in the house. Um, I do uh, have the ambition to have my own factory, have my own embroidery set up in you know, do my own manufacturing for my stuff. Like that would be great. Um, Cause again, I just need to have the access to be able to do these things, but I see it, I see it. So yeah, it's, um, I love embroidery. It's great quality. Uh, it's nothing like it really, right? I think embroidery is, is, is so, it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, me too. I love embroidery. <laughs> I love embroidery. <laughs> And, and it's cool you taught yourself, but it's, it's, some of those machines threaded them. It's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I watch videos and everything, but, you know, and they give you a little class, but, you know, you still ultimately have to get up there and, like, do it. <laughs> and do it, yeah, which is, like, yeah. uh, can be challenging. <laughs> Very much so. When it's, like, breaking, the threads are breaking, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, why is the thread breaking? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then can you, uh, do you have anyone else who works with you or do you do wear all the hats? I wear all the hats. Um, I will have a staff and a support system in the future, but as of right now, I wear all the hats. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a big job. <laughs> big job. You know, I don't want to wear all the hats just right now. That's just what it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah you have to start somewhere so 
Some yeah. Yeah. of course. <laughs> and so can you talk about, um, you talked about this a little bit, but can you talk about your design process? Or I guess my question is, is so do you, you don't buy wholesale, you produce, you create your products and sell them, however that manifests. Is that true? Well, no, I mean, I come up with ideas. It's just based on what I want to do. Like the last collection I put out um, was the, the Free Yourself collection. And I, those pieces were my my first cut and sew pieces. Mm-hmm. So I just made a traditional white t-shirt with the Stylish Freedom logo. Um, I had my um, oversized t-shirt that I created with the elephant on it. Mm-hmm. Um, with the hoodie to go with that and other shirt I created from scratch and then a short set so that was really just about me wanting to dive into saying hey can I draw my own silhouettes can I make my own pieces right um so that's what that was about so no I do buy uh wholesale just depends on what's going on or what I want to do like right now coming up I found quite a few vendors that that have the quality of clothing that I'm looking for. Um, Mm -hmm. Some of the other things I'm going to be making from scratch. Um, Mm -hmm. So it'll be a mix of the two, Um, but they're all going to be, it's still going to be a cohesive vision uh, for that, but it will be a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so do you uh, hire, do you create everything or do you um have hire some folks to manufacture like no yeah i get my stuff manufactured um i've been working with the manufacturer in ohio for quite some time uh they do a lot of work for me um i have uh, another manufacturer that i work with so no i don't you know only like some of these like i said these one-off pieces i make in house Everything mm-hmm. else is made in a factory, getting pressed out right, tagged and bagged and sent to me. Um, I'm not trying to, you know, do everything. Like I said, mm-hmm. only yeah. do a couple of little things with the embroidery, the very small select pieces that I do. Um, but everything else that comes in mass production or anything for the collection is being produced in a factory. Got it. Yeah, it makes yeah. sense. So then can you talk about your inspiration for your collection your past collections and then potentially the future ones and and where do you find inspiration for the narratives that you want to tell through the club um a lot of my inspiration is just coming from just life and what's going on around me um i really love you know high fashion in the sense of what they're doing like a like you know Eve Saint Laurent and Tom Ford you know and I'm definitely not doing it on that level at all but I'm just trying to be consistent to get myself on that pace of where they are but I'm looking at you know my peers mostly I'm looking at the Supremes I'm looking at Pierre you know Pierre Moss I'm looking at uh, what Don C is doing um, I'm looking and seeing what, what Kanye was doing. I was paying attention to, you know, all the things that he was building and, you know, especially with his shoes, you know, he created a new silhouette for that, um, which is dope because everybody else was really going for the same mold that we see Nike and Vans and New Balance, and, you know, they already had these molds and people were really just copying a lot of those molds and slapping their logo on it, but he created something new, um, which is really exciting for fashion, and exciting for young entrepreneurs like myself coming up. Um, but for me, I've always just been trying to search for um, what somebody like me wants to wear. And I think that I also got caught up a lot in that, just being a former athlete, because a lot of times I'm just looking at like, what's comfortable? What am I going to wear every day? What am I going to wear multiple times? You know, I haven't really got caught up in making these clothes that are these looks 
I'm really making clothes that I know you're going to wear over and over again. I want to make a shirt that I know you're going to wear multiple times. You can be like, man, I had this forever. I wear this all the time, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so that's really like my inspiration for what I have created um, already. Now, where I am, I'm really looking to st really take my level, my, my step my game to another level. Um, looking at Kid Super and looking at Pharrell and, you know, what they're doing with their collections and even Kim Jones um, and, again, Tom Ford, you know, still so excellent at what they do. Um, and that's very inspirational for me. And that also helps give me um, a palette to follow where I really like honing in and taking it more serious than I have been in the past. Before I'm like, all right, I got some shirts to put out. Is it summertime? I'm putting them out. I got a, I got this to put out. I'm gonna put it out. But now I'm like, no, I can't do that anymore. You know, so this is my first time really bringing somebody else in who helped me build the collection up. Um, I found some different um, vendors. Um, I'm sourcing some different products, and um, also really focused on making sure my rollout and my marketing is much better this time. Um, mm -hmm. So. I feel for me, I'm really just taking it um, to another level as a business and not just thinking of it just like these clothes that I like. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just trying to say, oh, everybody going, you know, people know me, they, you know, they just want what's coming. Like, no, I have to really build a formula and build a plan and have a rollout for Tomboy, for Stylist Freedom. Mm -hmm so that I can set myself apart from all the other things that I've done. Because all the other things I've done have really, I feel like they kind of blended in with one another. And I really need to set myself apart from what I did last year, or the year before. Yeah. And then, um, can you, do you, you mentioned sourcing. Oh, go ahead, sorry. And you and you were asking me about the stories. I didn't, I didn't elaborate on that. So um, in terms of, like this year's um, collection is going to be called the elephant in the room. Oh, you already cool. know that because the elephant is the elephant, you know, the elephant in the room. Um, in the past, I really try to stay tight with the, the, the theme of freedom, whether it's live free, volume one, two or three, free yourself, you know, um, those kind of names, um, just holding tight to the brand and really trying to pound in people's heads that, you know, you need to live free and stylish freedom. When we think of freedom, I want you to think of this brand. And I want you to see this logo. And I want you to think of Tomboy. And, you know, so I really think, too, I've been so focused on just making sure that has been present. Um, I've been just kind of just like beating the drum. And then you mentioned a little bit about sourcing. And so do you source um, your products at like the at the material level at the you know any part of the production process or do you um, rely on other folks to help source materials no I've been I've been kind of like doing a lot of my own research you know reaching out to people you know getting a lot of samples um mm -hmm. things like that and, and really figuring out what's going to be the best look for it, uh what feels the best um, because again, you know, I'm still dabbling in traditional streetwear, you know, mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that I'm getting the best streetwear, the best t-shirts, the best shorts, um, you know, staying on point about the colors, uh, the colors that I picked for, for this collection, do they go together? Um, you know, everything that's in the collection, can it be worn together? Um, those types of things I'm really focused on, um, with this rollout. And, um, so, so yeah, I, um, it just depends, but but right now, um, I'm still just rocking with other people and just seeing who has the best source of materials from, you know, blank t-shirts, the shorts, socks, et cetera, et cetera. And like I said, there still are a couple pieces. I'm I'm making still making my own shorts, and um, there's there's another piece that I'm making on my own. So um, I still will be sourcing some fabrics um, for that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And. What are you most proud of so far in your brand? That I didn't give up. That I didn't give up. That I that I still continue to go. Um, that I continue to give myself a standard. Um, that I know that I'm not going to be doing this by myself forever. Um, that um, regardless of 
where I might think I am, I know that I'm further along than I know I am, right? I feel like all of us sometimes, we feel like we're nowhere, but we're definitely somewhere. So I know I'm somewhere. I'm sitting here talking to you, um, you know, so um, I know that I'm doing some good and I just have to continue to move forward and not be too hard on myself about the mistakes I made in the past. Um, just continue to move forward and know that I, I, can, I can and I will get better. And so that's exciting. You know what I mean? And then what do you view as most successful so far in your brand? We've gotten featured on quite a few lists. You know, that's been exciting. Um, mm -hmm. Also, the fact that, you know, quite a few celebrities, you know, have, have, you know, gravitated towards what I got going on. You know, that feels good. But, you know, minus the celebrities, just the everyday people. To everyday people when I was out there this summer in the street you know so many people in New York City who have bought style of freedom men women you know people who come up and buy things for their children because they know that they'll look great in tomboy especially when I tell them what it means so at the end of the day that's what really means a lot to me because those are the people that have helped me continue to stay in business those are the people who go home and tell their friends and go buy something from my website so that's what means the most to me is those people, um, you know, you know, and I mentioned the celebrities because, again, though, it, it feels good to say, you know, they feel good about wearing it on their little, not on their little, but on their platform. You know, I appreciate that. But the people that stop by and talk to me and have given me money out their own pocket and have come back time and time again, you know, shout out to Beth. You know, she's one of my um, big supporters. Shout out to Asia. Uh, another, you know, repeat supporter. Um, these people who continue to come back, shout out to Kami, uh, who continues to come back and support Stylish Freedom. That means so much to me. Uh, and, and I can't um, overlook that. Um, so so those are the people. And do you have a, um, a product that you sell that is your favorite or one that you're you feel most proud of that you produced and put out in the world? Probably that tomboy hat. You know, the tomboy hat, that was my first item I've ever made. Um, that's a staple in my brand. Um, that's the one thing I'm known for more than anything. Um, so, yeah, my tomboy hat. Yeah, I, I love my tomboy hat. And I think that that's, yeah, that's, that's like when you see that hat, you know that's me. You know, mm -hmm. but yeah, so the time will have for sure. And there were, excuse me, were there initial aspects of starting a fashion brand, in particular one that has um, intersections with uh, queer identities that surprised you? Um, I mean, I think that all things are difficult, but I think that because I am a, a masculine woman and representing this kind of brand, it has been more difficult, absolutely, for sure. Um, because I like, feel like a lot of people, you know, even women are like, whoa, I'm not wearing that because that's some gay shit and I'm not down with that. You know, and dudes be like, yo, I'm not wearing that. That's just feel like gay girls, like that's not for me. So it was like getting through those dynamics and not just feeling like I had to cater to one community, knowing that I can be wide open and I have to allow people to understand and they have to come to me, but I have to also be diverse with what I'm doing and the brain has to grow, right? So I can't keep expecting for, you know, all these people, you know, whether it's men, women, children, whomever, to come to a brand that's not growing, that's not giving me new dope, fresh clothing, that's not giving me something like I got to have. Like, so I can't be looking for this response if I'm not giving, you know, I have to give and produce. So um, I think that I had to look inward so that I would stop looking outward and blaming everybody for not supporting me. I got to step it up and make sure I'm bringing the best quality um, so that people can't walk past me without saying, oh, I got to have that. Wait a minute. You know? Mm -hmm. And what types of positive feedback do you get related to your brand either could be 
products, um, the media, any other, any parts of what you've created? Again, the people, you know, people who show me so much love, you know, who come and write me emails and, you know, write comments or take pictures and, you know, tag me online and, you know, tell their friends and, you know, get excited to wear my brand or if I meet somebody who knew somebody at award and they have so many positive, amazing things to say. Or when I go to Pride one year to the next and I see somebody the next year and they're so excited to see me and tell me how many times they want a shirt and they get compliments. Uh, that That is, that's what gives me gratification and makes me so happy. You know, those are the moments that are priceless because I know I'm really doing something good, you know? I'm really living in my purpose and I, all of us have one. And so I'm very thankful that I have a purpose. And I think that's the greatest gift, regardless of the money and all these things like, sure, is this not a business? Absolutely. Am I not trying to make money? Absolutely. I am. But that's still the greatest gift is knowing that I'm giving out gifts to others. You know what I'm saying? Even if it's in the form of a t-shirt, it's still a gift because somebody else smiled when they put it on, you know? Mm -hmm. And then do you, have you ever received negative feedback from folks about the sure. brand? Sure, you know, um, that's why, you know, I, I, I know that's, that's, that's a given, you know, and not just the hate of, you know, it's, it's some gay shit, some dyke shit, like that's typical, you know, but just about me needing to get better and, you know, have more colors or just have more synergy or, you know, be more aligned and, you know, be more visible and be more consistent and, you know, I need help. And, you know, so I listen, I, I, I appreciate all of that because it's all true. And uh, I take I take it and I, I, I write it down. And I, and I do my best to say, you know what, uh, I'm going to make sure that I kill it the next time that I come out here because it's time to go to the next level. Like you're right, I've been doing this for too long. It's time to go to the next level. It really is. But I have to put the fuel injection in the, in the rocket. So, yeah. yeah. And can you talk about the imagery that you use to promote your products and the types of folks or if you don't use people um why you make those choices and what informs them well you know for this i really have been thinking about that um that imagery and all of those things and i think for me you know it's important for me to bring somebody creatively in to help me flesh that out but in the past <clears throat> i've used models um i've used other masculine women most of the time um, that I feel just represent the aesthetic of stylist freedom and the culture, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and have their own tomboy energy and swag um, that can be uh, highlighted. Um, and, you know, and so I feel like even just having an archive and a consistency of that, that people can depend on me to see that and see that energy and know that they can come here for that. Um, I think that I was good with representing that, um, that focus. Um, so that's really where I was over the last, you know, eight to 10 years mm -hmm. of the break is, you know, I did a lot of photographing myself as well. Uh, I used myself as a model quite a few times, mm -hmm. you know, um, but again, as I move forward, as I look forward, I know it's time to um, really be adventurous about that and not feel like I have to box in the vision. Mm -hmm. You know, it's still going to mean tomboy, it's still going to mean stylish. Mm -hmm. Every single brand owner who I've, who I've done an oral history with, they've all modeled. <laughs> yeah. They're all like, yeah, that's me. You know, I'm, or I could then, I'm like, you know, I ask that question, but they're all like, yes, I have, you know, sometimes they use other people too, but you know, they're like, you know, sometimes it's me. And I'm like, yep, I get it. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and <clears throat> uh, can you talk a little bit about if you want um, funding for the business and if you 
um, sought funding in the beginning, or if you self-fund, or crowdfund, or investors, or if you don't want to talk about funding, that's also okay. <laughs> I mean, I just, you know, I'll put it like this, you know, I, you know, I am self-invested, you know, this is an independent brand. I would never say that I don't want an investor or somebody who believes in the vision and you wants to help the, the vision take it to the next level, but it was all, it would always be a conversation. Um, I have in the past looked to get some money and get some grants and do some things, but you know, it hasn't turned out the way I would like. Um, I can't say that I put my all into that. Um, you know, again, sometimes life and work and all these things do take precedent. Uh, so I have chose to do it kind of got quote unquote, the hard way, uh, my way, um, did it the independent way. Uh, mm -hmm. so that's really where I'm at with it right now. And I know that that soon, that soon come is going to pay off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it reflects your brand, you know, that like <laughs> independent, you know, because the moment you have investors, you know, that then there's opinions coming, you know, or, oh yeah you know like whatever it is that they vision you know can sometimes influence oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> um and then <clears throat> um can you talk about um ways that you might consider so we talked a lot about the ways that um gender and sexuality and those expressions of the body manifest in your brand. Um, and so I'm in also interested in like other ways you think about different areas that intersect with fashion brands, specifically environment, environmental justice and, and those ideas. So do, do you think about or consider environmental sustainability or environmental justice in some of the decisions that you're making? We're creating my clothes. Yeah, it could be, it, it, it spans, it's a big question, <laughs> um, but yeah, it could be any, any part if you think about that. I mean, I thought about the, you know, the, in terms of like the quality of, of clothing and how that impacts the environment. I have thought about that um, in terms of like the themes of, you know, my clothing, my clothing brand being more social and aware. Um, mm -hmm. I've also thought about that. That's why, you know, I keep that that freedom, you know, even that freedom with that fist um, that was, you know, purposeful and just making a statement, you know, that I feel we all can relate to um, mm -hmm. just the empowerment of self, um, finding your freedom, you know what I'm saying, liberating your spirit and your mind. Um, so I do keep that kind of stuff in mind, um, especially for me as a Black woman. I feel like freedom is always on our mind. Um, you know, uh, liberation, you know, especially when you're living an alternative lifestyle, you know, you're never really free, you know, you're always trying to find your freedom. Uh, so um, that's always in, in my mind um, for me. Um, but I can't say that I've been, you know, super vocal about that or, you know, put that on front street, you know, a whole lot. But anybody who knows me knows my passion and knows that I'm, I'm always telling a story and, you know, always moving towards that righteous energy. Um, so yeah, I can I can say that. And environmentally, I can't say I'm the most profound on that. But again, I am conscious when I am making my clothes about the impacts on the environment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, do you uh, think about other intersectional ethics um, when you're making business decisions, um, like? things around like body size or you know, any other any other I do, considerations i mean i have you know i did have a conversation about making sure that i have you know sizes for you know folks that you know might be in the two and three x size range you know um and being open to that um and having that stuff available um so yes i you know have been very uh, cautious about that and again I think that all of my clothing is for whomever wants to wear it um, I don't have clothing that is too restricted regardless of how you identify um, but I think being more conscious about uh, body size and 
um, making sure I have certain sizes available. I have been more um, conscious of that because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that's, you know, it's very important. And then you mentioned um, doing in-person events like Pride. Um, and so can you talk about other areas that you intersect with that might be more community oriented beyond what you've already mentioned, um, like other spaces that you might do pop-ups or engage with that are community or community outreach oriented? Uh, I can't say for sure. I do do this uh, weekly pop-up, so to speak, over in Best Star, Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. um, that it has more of a community feel to it because it's called Building Black Bed Star, uh, where it's very um, about Black entrepreneurs being there and being present um, and getting support as, you know, a lot of gentrification and things like that have come into the neighborhood and kind of like uh, watered down um, the Black community. Um, so I was doing that weekly during the summertime. Um, and I plan on doing that again this summer. Um, mm -hmm. So that was very much a community uh, organized uh, event that was about the community and strengthening the community and getting the grassroots. Um, so I was very proud to be able to be over there and be part of that. Very yeah. Much. Yeah. That's huge. That's really huge. That's amazing. <laughs> and then um, can you, you talked a little bit about your, who your customers are, but can you talk a little bit about if there's anything else to add about who um, buys your products and um, and how much interaction you have with those folks who buy your products, you know, um, I think that I, I think my my brand right now is kind of like fifty fifty split with men and women. I really mm -hmm. feel like it's equal. Uh, I do know a lot of people that buy my brand, but a lot of people I don't know, especially online. <laughs> Uh, in person, I feel like um, I've been able to develop a lot of relationships with my customers, especially with the local community. Um, you know, June Ambrosia even came by my, my table when I was at the Brooklyn Museum because she was just out and about uh, going to see an exhibit. Um, and that's, you know, special because, you know, again, regular people are just out here every day, just going shopping and just hanging out and having a good time. And you get to meet them and say hi and have a conversation about your brand or just about the weather and how what you're doing kind of relates to the community and what everybody else had going on, whether they selling low lotion or he's selling coats or she's selling jackets or he's selling like painting on shorts. It's, you know, we're all genuinely have our own aesthetic and our own flavor. Um, and I think that is dope because I really have a great conversation with all these different people that come past my booth. I really like the in-person uh, uh, selling you know, whether it's a pop-up or a festival. Um, and it makes me wish, man, I wish I had a store um, because, you know, the, the conversation and meeting those people, it's, it's, it's priceless. You know, the things that you can discuss and the people that you can meet. And, and I think you asked me about my price point, like things in my, in my, for my brand can range from $30 to $65. Um, I think that I did have one thing at $120. Um, so yeah, that, you know, um, my, my socks were $10. Um, so, you know, the everyday person can shop at Stylist Freedom. Um, I'm not trying to uh, spend all your money, uh, but know <laughs> that, you know, my clothing is good quality product and I don't uh, just put anything out there for anybody. So. And then can you talk about your experience at the Brooklyn Museum and what that was like and why why it was important to go and participate in that event? Uh, yeah, I've been following Dapper Q um, for many, many years. I have a great relationship with them. Much, much respect to Anita and everything that she's built uh, there. Uh, it's been beautiful to see their maturation. Uh, I aspire to one day be a designer in the show. Uh, I was very happy to just be able to be part um, as a vendor. Uh, to be able to showcase Stylist Freedom and where I've uh, come over the last, you know, 15 years. And a lot of people who were at the show knew my brand and knew what I've been doing in the community um, in Brooklyn over, over this time. 
Uh, so it's so it's really nice to be able to to support them and support the designers and uh, and actually see uh these these um the the talent that all these people had um in their different various sectors of fashion. You know, some people focused on denim or leather or this or that or suits, and it's beautiful to see that. Um, it's exciting for me as a, as a designer. Like I said, I'm still a student. I'm still learning especially when it comes to the tailoring and cutting and sewing. And I highly respect all the designers who can do that and put that together because that's still a level that I aspire to get to. Um, so it was important for me to see that, um, to support the Brooklyn Museum, to support the designers, and also to showcase my own work. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then can you talk about social media in relation to your business and how important or not it is for you social media is 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 vital um it's you know a, a big tool and big key to my success and you know helping me stay present and stay consistent and stay present to people who don't know who i am or see me every day um, um people that need to know what's going on with the brand uh, we need to stay in people's minds in the algorithm um it's very important i mean it's just such a important tool that again, I wish I had somebody else that could run it for me. Um, it's it's you know it's 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 it's, it's vital. So social media is the key, you know, mm. it's the key. And then um, just maybe two more questions here. Um, <clears throat> when you think about your the person who might purchase and then wear the products that you create and put into the world what kinds of shopping experiences and or wearing experiences do you want them to have I feel like they don't have any limitations with their fashion um that they that they want to be different um uh that they want to support the things that are different um or they want to get something for somebody else uh, that they know would look good in my clothes. I feel mm -hmm. like it's it's a lot of that for me. I feel like a lot of other people want to liberate other people uh, through my brain um, and even liberate themselves. But I feel like a lot of people are looking to liberate people they love through stylish food. Um, mm -hmm. They see something that says tomboy or whatever. They're like, yo, I need to get that for my friend. You know, like, I feel like they're really trying to show love to other people who need to, like, free themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then um, you talked um, about trends and inspiration. Um, is there anything else to add about where you look to for trends or um, what's happening in fashion that helps inform you know, either business decisions or you know, what you might be looking for creatively? I try to look at the magazines, you know, I try to read a little more than I did before, really stay up on the fashion week uh, information, trying to stay up on what, you know, the trends are for 2025, you know, um, what the colors are for 2025, you know, what the denim is looking like for that, you know, what they got going on in Japan, you know, just really trying to stay up on things that, you know, before didn't matter, quote unquote, matter to me. Uh, they need to matter to me now. Um, I need to know what, what is going on. Um, and, you know, just staying up on the finer things, you know, and really having myself think richer um, and think, you know, um, in a different space, you know. So that's that's really what's important to me now is to go outside the box of what was comfortable. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I just added this question <laughs> to my list of questions I, I haven't asked other folks this but um there's like a large presence of AI or like artificial intelligence that's like proliferating everywhere so do you do you think about AI in any of your business processes or do you it's not something you're thinking about it's not something I'm thinking about at the moment I'm not one of these AI people I'm not really high <laughs> I know that a lot of people are like, yo, you behind, you're going to get left behind. And, you know, it's just not where I'm at right now. It's so much mm -hmm. that I need to learn. That's not one of the things that I need to focus on at this moment. You know, when mm -hmm. it's time to focus on it, I will. Uh, mm -hmm. But right now, like, I'm good, you know. 
Like, it's just, like I said, there's too much other stuff that I need to catch up on right now before I add a whole nother layer with this AI stuff. Like, <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it sounds like you have such a great, um, like, connection, like, non-AI, you know, it's like the opposite of AI, which is like community connection. I feel like AI yeah. is like the opposite of that. Exactly. Like, <laughs> which is like, ugh. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then I always ask in the end, is there any, I've asked you like a lot of questions and is there anything else that would be important for me to know about your brand, your background or your story that we haven't covered yet um no nah, I mean I think that we got all the nooks and crannies but you know it's important to know that we're all talented original motivated brilliant outstanding individuals um and it's important for you to live free you know find your freedom and really um look within yourself for your own happiness first um before you can look to anybody else um you know because your style is your freedom so yeah that's that's the biggest thing for me and you know Check out, you know, TonyBranson.com, um, all my filmmaking endeavors. Uh, you can see what I got going on there. You can look me up on YouTube, Tony Branson. Um, yeah, and just tap in with me.